So welcome as you're joining us. We, Shannon Harris and I, um, are glad to spend this hour chatting about some of SLHS's changes uh, as it relates to curriculum. Um, given that we are just at the strike of 3.30, I'm going to pause and let folks um, join and, and settle. Um, but for those who are already here, welcome. If there are specific questions that you have, um, please feel free to utilize the chat function. You can also uh, raise your hand and ask specific questions. Um, again, I'm kind of front of house. You'll, you'll see me and some information. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Dr. Rossi Katz, a professor and chair of speech language hearing sciences department and I have my trusty colleague behind the scenes um, my co-pilot Shannon Harris with us as well um, she'll be monitoring the chat so again please include questions in the chat Shannon already has provided um, some resources for you in the chat um, do be aware there's often a delay of about 10 seconds um, between what uh, I am presenting and what you may be hearing. So uh, in the event you ask a question and it's not answered immediately, it might just be caught in that, that bit of a, a time gap. Um, but seeing as we're just past 3.30 and it looks like our attendee uh, list, at least for the time being, has remained constant, I'm going to go ahead and, and get started. And the purpose of this town hall is really twofold. Um, I wanted an opportunity to explain a uh, big picture, some of the changes that we SLHS have done in terms of the SLHS major and minor, as well as our leveling and SLPA certificates. And I also want to spend a little time talking about what fall 2021 semester will look like as it relates to course delivery. Um, so I'll start with some of the broader curriculum uh, programmatic changes and I'll do a flyover of what these changes are and then I'll pause and would welcome folks to post questions to the chat um, and answer specific questions and then from there we'll move into uh, course delivery specifically for for fall 2021 and I have no doubt that those of you who are joining us today um, are aware that SLHS has put through and has been approved um, for some curriculum changes for the upcoming academic year. And we did so um, very purposefully and really um, were, were guided by some main uh, objectives in revising the curriculum. Um, our curriculum, aside from some minor changes here and there, hadn't been updated in the last 10 years, um, which is not atypical, but it was certainly time um, to do a, a curricular overhaul of the the undergraduate program and the time was right um, given that we are looking ahead to graduate program launch um, again haven't gotten our official word on that but all things going according to plan we should hear about our accreditation status in early summer so what were those guiding lights, if you will, in terms of uh, making some curricular programmatic changes? Well, number one is we wanted to give students 
different opportunities to fulfill some of the university requirements and that specifically is senior experience which I'll talk about um, as well as recognize some of the developments and advancements within the field that are important to include at an undergraduate level. Uh, one uh, particular example here is we are going to offer starting in spring of 2022 uh, neural bases of communication class, a communication neuroscience class. And we have not ever had a standalone dedicated three credit class that covers this important uh, foundational topic. So that will launch in, in fall or excuse me, in spring of, of 2022. Perhaps most useful for those of you joining us are the numbering changes and some of the naming changes that have gone into existing uh, coursework. So what uh, is, is provided for you is a conversion chart. So you see that conversion chart on the screen. Um, Shannon has also provided links to this uh, in the chat. You can find this conversion chart on our website. But what this is, is going to, on the left column, it tells you the number and name of the course pre-fall 2021. So these are all numbers. If you're taking SLHS courses this spring, these are all numbers that should look familiar. The equivalent course then is going to be listed on the right with respect to the new numbering and the new naming scheme. And I do want to assure you that we, we didn't just change names of the courses to change names. We are also doing kind of an overhaul and making sure that, you know, assessment techniques in those classes and the course outline have also been updated. So it, it isn't just a name only, um, but for our purposes, I'm going to emphasize a little bit broader brush stroke than going into the, the changes in each course individually. Um, what I want to make sure, though, that you all hear is that when you uh, apply and declare SLHS as your major or minor, you get what's called a catalog year. So perhaps you joined us and started at MSU Denver in 2018. That's our commitment to you, and that's the curriculum that we would hold you to, but we would also be expected to provide you um, so through to graduation. So you might go, wait a second, this is a new change now. Does that mean that it's a whole new set of expectations? And please hear me say no. Um, depending on what catalog year you came in under, we will work with you to ensure that you are getting the major courses um, that you need, that are required. Um, for some of you, you may elect to change to this latest catalog, the, what we would think of as the newest catalog. Um, but for many, again, you'll, you'll stay the course, you'll stay the catalog you, you have been um, up to this point. So the biggest change um, is likely going to be, and this is only going to really apply to degree seeking students. Um, and by degree seeking students, I'm talking about our students who are obtaining their first bachelor's at MSU Denver. Um, MSU Denver University wide has a requirement that students complete a senior experience course. That's not a requirement of SLHS only or the art department, um, nor is it a requirement of our uh, psychology department. 
every student who graduates with an undergraduate degree at MSU Denver completes what's called a senior experience or capstone course. For the longest time, um, our senior experience course was SLHS 4500 Principles of Assessment and Intervention. We have decided that we need to disentangle the principles of assessment and intervention content from senior experience. And there's several reasons for doing that. One being that students are leveling students, um, may also need to take principles of assessment and intervention, clinical methods, but they don't need the senior experience component to that. The other reason to disentangle them was our degree seeking students may want options in what senior experience they elect to take. Um, up to this point, to do an SLHS senior experience, there was only one option. Um, so now what we're really excited to kind of launch is that principles of assessment and intervention will remain a, a class. That class is now SLHS 3300. But there will be as an, another series of courses that students can elect if they need to, to fulfill the senior experience requirement. And those options include the SLP assistant class. Many folks have taken our SLPA assistant methods class, but it didn't qualify as having senior experience designation. Well, now it does. So these are exciting changes and I think beneficial changes for lots of different folks. Um, another example is our uh, peer mentorship with autism. So working with Dr. Santhanam's Isaac program. Students participated in that opportunity perhaps, but they weren't able to use that as their senior experience or capstone project. So now you see two options within SLHS to complete the senior experience university requirement. And that's either speech language pathology assistant methods course, what we're now labeling as SLHS 4350, or signing up with SLHS faculty to do the senior experience or capstone under their direction, what's called 4300. Again, if you don't need the senior experience requirement, but what you need is the clinical methods or principles coursework, well, that class now exists separate from senior experience classes. Um, another good thing about this switch is we are now able to include all 25 observation hours and many of you will um, know that at present we are we, we put these observation hours in different classes and students oftentimes are piecing together or patching together uh, uh, these 25 observation hours in order to begin their SLP assistant practicum or prior to graduate school. So now by having principles of assessment and intervention as a standalone course, we are able to add those 25 observation hours under the umbrella of that specific class. Um, in the event that there are some of you joining us who may be saying, well, wait a second, I only need principles of assessment and intervention to finish, but it needs to have senior experience designation. What do I do? We have an avenue under our new curriculum for you to be able to get the content in the principles class as well as offer it with a senior experience designation. Um, and without going into too many details regarding that, 
what I would strongly encourage you to do is schedule with an SLHS advisor. And Shannon in the chat provided this schedule link um, so you can meet with one of us and we can tell you how by doing SLHS 4300, you can apply um, concepts from principles of assessment and intervention. So know that we have um, tried to pre uh, uh, think about or predict um, as many of these situations. Invariably, there'll be some that we haven't thought of all the, the distinction, um, but what this hopefully will um, encourage you to do, if nothing else, is to meet with an SLHS faculty member to talk about your unique circumstances. Um, I'm going to pause there because that was a whole bunch of information, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of grounding in terms of why we did this. Um, the course conversion chart, I think, is a game changer in terms of looking at well, what it was in previous catalogs and then how the course is, is labeled in this catalog. Um, but I'll pause at this point and see if there are specific questions related to curriculum changes um, that Shannon or I can answer. And Shannon, you might already have gotten some questions. I actually have not. OK, <laughs> well, great time. Um, if you have questions as it relates to these curriculum changes, please um, don't hesitate to put those in the chat. Um, and don't forget to check out those additional resources that Shannon has provided. Well, I am happy to can keep going, but I, I certainly um, want this to be uh, bi-directional and the questions that you have, again, welcoming you to pose those questions. Um, I'll leave lots of time at the end for general questions as well. Um, let me think as I look at this, Trying to remember, we did a town hall on Thursday as well with these um, same topics, and I don't, nothing is coming to mind of a, a question or comment that was brought up that isn't already addressed. Um, but again, I welcome, welcome yours. Anything to talk about, Shannon, or are we good to talk about what fall will look like? I think we are good to continue what we'll to talk about what fall will look like. <laughs> Great. Um, so as you all know, there has um, continued to be lots of discussion, um, consideration as to what our uh, safe return to campus, our Roadrunner safe return to campus um, will look like as we approach the fall 21 um, spring 22 academic year and uh, rest assured that the university at large as well as uh, SLHS department um, were really involved in very comprehensive discussions as to what fall, uh, what suggested for fall. Um, number one consideration, um, first and foremost, is, is the safety of our campus community. And then as we think about, you know, other priorities, um, there's the priority among especially our SLHS student um, body and community to have flexibility in our class offerings. Um, so university wide, there was you know, students reporting back that they wanted to be, you know, back face to face taking classes on campus. Um, and we saw a little bit of that in informal surveying of SLHS students. But I think kind of the number one thing that came through to us was that students want flexibility. Um, 
we know that SLHS students are balancing other um, professional and personal obligations. So we wanted to be very thoughtful and very proactive in how we can offer classes that give us kind of the best of, of both, if you will, um, live learning engagement as well as virtual learning. And prior to the, the pandemic, so academic years 18, 19, um, SLHS had been looking to having a, a bit stronger of a virtual learning presence. And things obviously uh, as it related to the pandemic that became not um, an option, but a necessity. So now that we are looking at kind of the, the next iteration of how we're offering classes, what we really would like to be able to offer is the best of both, right? So having um, experience for live engagement. So students um, in the classroom working with both peers as well as professors uh, on um, applied learning activities, you know, getting clarification on concepts, but then also taking advantage of the materials we've developed for the virtual learning platforms. Um, so what we hope we've landed on or very close to is a fall schedule that allows for this. And um, so the, the best word to describe our fall 2021 offerings is going to be hybrid courses. Um, and on the screen there, you see kind of what we mean by hybrid courses because different people define things different ways. But a hybrid course as we in SLHS are defining it is it is going to include both live instruction as well as asynchronous online learning. Um, the live instruction, depending on the course, could be required face to face or students would have the option of coming face to face or participating in live discussion through a platform like MS uh, Teams. So we have over the last semester, we have updated the central uh, SLHS kind of department classroom footprint. Um, it's so, you know, it, it hits me that a lot of students that are new to SLHS may not have ever, ever been in central building and seen our previous classrooms. Um, but over uh, the last essentially, gosh, uh, 22, no, not 22 months, I would say 10 months, um, there's been construction on that central footprint that we use. And we now have converted what was a computer lab by our offices into a high flex classroom. What this means is that students can be in the class with the instructor, but other students can be participating at the same time synchronously um, through a virtual uh, interface like Teams. So there's monitors at different places in the classrooms, there's drop microphones different places, um, so it's really slick in terms of what it allows. Now that being said, some SLHS classes uh, require kind of face-to-face, hands-on experiences to really um, make it an optimal learning environment. So there are some SLHS classes in which a face-to-face -face component will be required. Um, but we're going to be very purposeful in terms of what are the times you are coming face to face and then being able to augment that with asynchronous online learning. So on your screen, you see that the majority of what we're calling the SLHS core, 
Now there are classes that are not listed here like language acquisition, um, nor are the, the senior experience classes that I mentioned, the 4300 and 4350. But the vast majority of, of SLHS core classes are listed. And you see that by using a hybrid delivery, we're able to kind of block schedule, if you will, SLHS classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So whereas historically, you may have come to diagnostic audiology twice a week for 75 minutes each, now by using this kind of taking the best of the asynchronous online and then building in the live um, instruction, we'll meet for diagnostic audiology one day in a 75 minute period. And again, you have the option of doing that in the classroom face to face or doing it through MS Teams. So it allows us, which is what we are hearing loud and clear our students wanted, more flexibility in scheduling, knowing especially ahead of time, kind of these are the day or days that I need to be on campus or available for interaction so that they can then kind of work with the other um, aspects of their lives in terms of job and job scheduling. Um, so there are three classes listed. So if you look Tuesday, Thursday, you'll notice that there are three classes with asterisks. And what these classes are is that a face-to-face in person, sitting in the, the classroom is required. Um, and these are going to be speech science, 20, what is 2530, um, anatomy and physiology of speech, which is 3530, and then clinical phonetics, which is 3200, I believe. Yes, the, the numbers, I, I'm getting them pretty, pretty well, but always want to be sure I'm not goofing. Um, so clinical phonetics 3200. So if you were to take clinical phonetics in fall 2021, some of the content will be delivered through Canvas asynchronous, but you would also be coming every Tuesday 930 to 1045 to really engage in those um, experiences like transcribing with a peer, working with the, the faculty member Dr. McGuire to get kind of that immediate back and forth with respect to um, understanding. So those three hybrid but require presence on campus. Um, the other classes that are listed there, you have the option of doing the live portion, again, either with the instructor in the classroom or you have the option of participating in that live component through MS Teams. And, and you know, it's not that you have to decide on doing it one way and that's the way you do it for the whole semester. Um, one thing we heard um, clear from our students who uh, commute was that sometimes, you know, especially in, in um, Colorado with the weather that we've been having, it's not safe, right, to, to drive up for a class. Um, so instead, if on that day the, the weather doesn't per, uh, allow you to do that, you can participate then virtually in that live session um, through MS Teams. So we wanted to, again, put real care into, well, we want live instruction in these classes. What could that live instruction look like? Does it have to be requiring students to be there in person, um, engaging with anatomical models or software? Or is it more discussion oriented, you know, thinking about clinical cases? that might lend itself to um, virtual participation if the student needs that. If you don't need it, again, please, um, we'd welcome you know, all to come for the face-to-face -face instruction for those courses as well. 
Um, so you see the schedule there. Again, language acquisition, um, we're going to run online, totally asynchronous. Um, the instructor, if you're needing to take language acquisition, may offer some drop-ins. Um, but for most here, I'm guessing that these are the, the courses within the major, the core, um, that are most kind of uh, on your minds as it relates to scheduling. And you can see again on Tuesdays and Thursdays when those classes have the live instruction component. And the other thing I'll note, two quick things, we are kind of holding the 1230 to 145 block um, so that we have time when we can come together as a larger community and you know talk about the graduate program and where we are as it relates to um, the graduate program talk about um, issues that the, the community at large, our SLHS community at large would benefit from. Um, this also gives our Nishla group some um, openings to schedule speakers and uh, other kind of events so that you all may have the option, hopefully, in participating in these. Um, some weeks may be informal kind of let's share lunch together as a as a group and you know check in um, talk about how things are going especially over the last um, year plus those options for just informal um, chit chat and connection uh, have been few and far between so we wanted to also create space within our community uh, to do that the final thing I'll say before um, seeing about questions is if you're wondering, well, how do I know if a class is, has a required face-to-face -face component or if I have the option of participating either in person, face-to-face, -face, or through MS Teams? I gave you two examples from the course scheduler what the course notes will say um, if it's a hybrid that has a required face-to-face -face component or if it's a hybrid in which you can choose between the face-to-face -face or the virtual. So you see up there anatomy and physiology of speech, which does have a face-to-face -face component in person that's required, contrasted with oral rehabilitation in which you have the option of participating on that required live component, that live piece, which would be Tuesdays from 3.30 to 4.45, you can do so either in the classroom or you can do so um, through Teams. So I'm going to pause there. Shannon, did I miss anything before I ask specific questions from your where you're sitting? No, I don't think you did, but we do have a question in the chat from uh, Meredith. She said, will there also be the option of being on campus for face to face classes for all of our classes? So I think she's asking, like, are there options for completely face to face? So exclusively face to face. Um, and I'm guessing that means like no asynchronous um, learning and all classes are going to have some asynchronous learning component to them. Um, but the vast majority of the classes will also have a live instruction component to them as well. Again, the only and you can come um, in person to do those. Um, some you're required to do that, but you can also um, participate in in those meetings virtually. But um, if I'm understanding correctly, and, and certainly um, I encourage folks to post other questions if I'm, I'm not, um, but in the SLHS core, there wouldn't be classes that are exclusively face-to-face -face without any kind of online component. Um, again, the online component um, is, is different than a strictly online class, though. I want to make sure that that I, that distinction is is coming through. Um, it won't be for the vast majority of our classes um, totally online. It will be a blend between them. 
So I hope that that helps Meredith, but please feel free to um, post follow up questions um, if I didn't answer that. And I'll, I'll just share too, we did that um, for multiple reasons. One reason is um, to give students flexibility in scheduling. Um, given the demands of, I know our SLHS students uh, as it relates to new, you know, jobs, um, families, meeting more often face to face um, would restrict the flexibility that students have as they're they're balancing these courses. So one um, of our motivators was thinking, how can we do this in an efficient, effective way? Um, and that ties into our second um, goal, which was over the last year, um, SLHS faculty as a whole have um, utilized a lot of uh, important online teaching tools um, to make the async or the online portions um, as beneficial as possible. So I'll just use from my example, you know, teaching anatomy and physiology of speech. Um, I now have, you know, maybe 12 video lectures each with uh, between five to 10 minutes. Um, and those video lectures, you'll be able to look at, you know, any time during the week. But then when you come to class, you'll really be able to engage with the, the three dimensional models and we'll be able to talk about, you know, why these muscles are important for our discussion of anatomy. Um, so our goal was also to take some of the advances we made in our courses as it relates to virtual material um, so that students can access them anytime, not just when they were sitting in the classroom with us. Um, Chelsea has a question. Will this new hybrid model for the undergraduate program carry over to the graduate school program or is the plan for it to be exclusively in person? That's a really good question, um, Chelsea. And Graduate courses are, are a bit of a different animal to altogether. Um, oftentimes, and, and I cannot, so I'll, I'll start by saying, I don't know, uh, because we, we are still in the, you know, development stages of the curriculum. Um, we are not, I, I can say, you know, offering an online master's program. That's for sure not um, what we're launching. Um, but within the context of the graduate curriculum, I would anticipate that there will be face-to-face -face component and then also utilizing these online learning platforms. Um, that just seems like the way, you know, higher education, not even higher education, I have a, a second grader and a, a sixth grader, they're using it, you know, as well. Education in, in general is, is incorporating, you know, virtual and, and live instruction. Um, what I will say though with the grad program, and this is sometimes um, new to students, is that along with the courses you're taking, you have clinical assignments. So uh, the clinical assignments, oftentimes those clinical assignments are done when clients are available. So it's not as traditional um, as an undergrad schedule as it is in, in grad school. You may have like two classes on a Friday because your clinical assignments are more likely to be, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So there's, there's it's just a little bit of a different animal, if you will, um, as it relates to how you embed clinical education into that. Um, so my long-winded answer of saying, I don't know, but certainly, you know, we, we will um, look to um, utilizing tools, both face-to-face -face and online for, for academic coursework in grad school. But again, the clinical education component is, is what's totally um, unique, if you will, as it relates to grad school. 
Good questions, though, and please um, keep them coming because uh, if, from the meetings that I have participated in, it's a question one asks may it's like a domino effect, right? It spurs a question in another person and you or you hear uh, what somebody says and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot I had that same very question. So um, any questions, all questions are welcome. And hopefully, again, lots of information. My purpose was really to kind of divide it into two uh, main goals. One, so you understand our, our curriculum changes, and then two, so you have a sense of, of what's ahead um, for fall 2021. Um, we're already starting to offer this spring. Dr. Walsh Aziz is offering uh, a new class, Foundations of Disability Studies. And that class, she uh, has students that are in the classroom, as well as students who are participating online um, live. And the reports to date, it's a fairly uh, new class. It's a, a it was a class that just started in mid-March, um, but students have been appreciating the flexibility that such a class offers. And given that these rooms are equipped uh, to deliver courses in that way, right? Like there are drop microphones around, there's different views for students to see those who are online and vice versa. Um, it's much different than if I were to, you know, try and hold that that type of class in an environment like my basement, right? Which is most certainly not equipped um, to handle that that level of engagement. Other questions, Shannon, that you're getting? I think you're muted, but I I think I haven't gotten any more. No. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. <laughs> I thought I saw your head shake, shake now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Shannon? Is there anything that I didn't say that we've been talking about in, in one of our many millions of meetings about this, these changes, these curriculum changes? Um, I mean, I think just paying attention to the course conversion chart and maybe having that pulled up while you're registering for classes so you know what it used to be called versus and so you know what you're looking for in its new title. Um, I think that will just be super helpful for a lot of students. And then if you yeah. do have any questions, again, just schedule an advising appointment and uh, they'll be able to help you out, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the course conversion chart, um, Shannon helped me design that. That was a uh, um, kudos to her, and I use it often. <laughs> and you know, I've been doing this curriculum changes since September, um, so I, I um, want to acknowledge and appreciate that. You know, seeing these new numbers, seeing these new titles, might might throw you. Um, and our hope is that using that conversion chart uh, takes a little bit of, of the guesswork out of it. Um, and it looks like Chelsea is also wondering, would switching our calendar year to the updated 2021 calendar be advantageous to applying and succeeding in the graduate school? So the question as it relates to you know what's the benefit of of changing a catalog year on on the face of it no the catalog year itself wouldn't um i think put folks in any kind of um uh, position of advantage or relative disadvantage um I want to, so what I would suggest if you're, you know, thinking about well, would I change it, would I not change it? A um, couple of things to, to be aware of, and I also will circle back because I want to remember to talk about what our prereqs for our grad 
program will be. Um, and the first being when you change your catalog year. So this is for our degree seeking students seeking a um, first bachelor's uh, in SLHS. It changes your catalog year kind of for the university at large. And um, so it would also change the catalog for your minor, let's say. So you want to be really um, kind of thoughtful and would would this be a benefit? Um, and what are the implications of changing it? Um, for folks who are pretty close to graduating, I don't see really a strong rationale for changing their catalog year. Um, for folks who might just be getting started with us, this is your first semester. Um, there might, the, the relative advantage that I can see is that when you pull up like a degree progress report, the classes that it says you need are the same classes then that are appearing on the course schedule, right? Like your course conversion um, chart would already be built into the degree progress report. Um, but for folks who, let's say you're graduating, you know, sometime uh, maybe next fall, changing a catalog year now, um, again, likely not going to have the, the same benefit in, as you're only going to be here another semester. Um, and I do want to make sure that that everybody realizes if you do elect to go forward to the newest catalog, that change does affect everything, including your minor. So if there were changes between, let's say you were a 2019 2020 catalog and you were doing SLHS as your major and you were doing um, German as your minor, if there were changes um, in the, the German minor um, in 2021 by changing your catalog to 21-22, you'd be held to those changes in the minor as well. So that, that's something to be um, thoughtful about. Um, but back to the question of graduate school competitiveness, what we're going to look for uh, for gr uh, applicants to our graduate program is that they have completed um, the core SLHS core courses. And those courses are going to be those that are required for a major uh, in SLHS. The, the classes that may not be listed in your current degree progress report are going to be eligible to be used as electives. So by way of example, neural bases of communication, that's going to be an elective class. And even if you're a 2019 2020 catalog, I can still as a SLHS advisor approve that as an SLHS elective. So you don't need to change the catalog to take a class like neural bases of communication. Um, so hopefully that that helps. Um, the other thing I should say is that uh, another motivator for making these changes is we now have more elective options for students. Um, so the classes are there and, and it doesn't require you to be a certain catalog to take them. Um, Miss Tracy said, have any of these curriculum changes added, added any additional classes for the leveling certificate? So I'm, I'm glad you said that, Tracy, because, um, well, two reasons. One is I should have mentioned this. I know you're asking about leveling certificate and I will address that um, immediately after I say this. We did not increase the credit requirements for the major in SLHS. Those are the same. So it has been for as long as I've been here since 2006, our major required 42 credit hours. The current major, so current major meaning the latest um, catalog, so 21, 22 changes, we are still a 42 credit hour major. Um, what's different is how many uh, classes we prescribe or require you to take versus the flexibility you have in electives. Um, so hopefully all hear that and, and that 
um, allows some, you know, uh, peace of mind that we certainly did not change the total number of major credits required for SLHS bachelor's major degree. For the leveling certificate, um, one thing just to note is many people don't actually go for the complete certificate. Their goal, you can, and certainly we welcome you to do that, but they take the classes um, based on what courses they'll need prior to graduate study. And as many of you know, uh, the, the prerequisites that a grad program requires differs based on the program. So right now, you know, two graduate programs in Colorado, CU Boulder, UNC, the hope is, you know, this time next year, there'll be a third one starting um, in summer of 2022. But if, if your plan is, you know, to apply to as many grad programs or fill in the blank number of grad programs, you'll just want to be aware of what particular courses, SLHS undergraduate courses, are required of that particular program. So that being said, what we, MSU Denver, are proposing for our graduate program is that there would be um, all of the eight that are currently listed on the leveling certificate, but that students would also take the principles of assessment and intervention, the clinical methods class, as well as that neural bases class. Um, and that's because we, uh, you know, by starting our graduate program, we've really been able to identify like these are the skills that we want our students to come in with from undergrad so that we can be at this level in terms of beginning graduate work. Um, but what I want to make sure comes through is that if you did leveling work, let's say in um, University of New Hampshire, and then you are applying to our grad program, the same expectations would apply. We would want you to have speech science, anatomy and physiology of speech, um, language acquisition, you know, speech disorders, uh, Lang disorders, in addition to a clinical methods, principles of assessment and neural bases class. So I hope that that answered that question, Tracy, but certainly um, I'm happy to, to speak more to that if it didn't. But I'm also very glad you reminded me to to, to say, because I think this is an important point that the total number of credits for the major didn't did not change. Anything else coming up, Shannon? No, nope, nothing else has come up. These are great questions. And again, not only does it maybe help spur your fellow attendees to a question, it reminds me of things I want to say and, and can't fit them all <laughs> in the brain. Um, so it also helps me. So I appreciate, appreciate the questions. Um, I know one thing has changed. The leveling certificate and the SLPA certificate do not require the same courses anymore, correct? Yes, we um, have also looked at the certificates and classes that students may have been taking to use for graduate school. And again, that's the principles of assessment and intervention um, is a big one that comes to mind. Those are that particular course wouldn't be required for um, speech language pathology assistant certificate. So there, there's a good amount of overlap still, but we really try again as we were doing this redesign, especially with um, grad program on the horizon to think about um, what are the unique needs of, of each of those. Um, the SLPA course, uh, that, that deadline for fall 2021 just passed, which was uh, this past Friday. 
Um, but certainly those of you on um, the, the call still, the meeting still, we do offer SLPA both fall and spring semesters. Um, you do, that's a different course in so much as you have to apply for it. You can't just automatically enroll in it. Um, but there's also really beneficial information about the SLPA certificate um, on the website. And some of you, this is, could probably be a topic for a whole nother town hall, um, but there, there's also been move for ASHA, the American Speech Language Hearing Association. They also have started to put forth some guidelines about speech language pathology assistance. Um, Colorado, our requirements as a state, again, this is not an MSU Denver, this is the state, Colorado Department of Ed, our requirements in this state are actually stricter than what ASHA's guidelines for SLP assistance have been. Um, so rest assured that our SLPA uh, course, coursework, um, does you know, meet the requirements within Colorado Department of Ed. And looks like Tracy also asked, are you offering any of these core classes in the summer? So. I know in the past, um, including this upcoming summer semester, we're going to be offering um, SLHS 1500 mm -hmm. communication sciences, but are we going to be offering anything else? So that's a very good question. And at, at present, um, the course, as, as Shannon mentioned, that we're offering for this upcoming summer is the Intro to Com Science. Um, there has been consideration, and again, this is, it's, it's kind of um, all hypothetical because this, we're now talking summer of 2022, um, but thinking about like a class like Neural Bases, um, stu you know, maybe doing that as a part of term course, which is like an eight week and end of, of the semester class rather than a traditional 16 week or potentially what if we ran that class in the summer? Um, but at present, we just haven't had the student numbers to support classes over the summer, meaning that the, the um, sections may have had three in them, which, which um, don't meet the, the requirements to run. But certainly if there is student need for such courses and we have kind of that critical mass, um, certainly we can consider offering, you know, some of these uh, upper division classes in the summer. And one thing to keep in mind as it relates to our graduate program, and again, this is all kind of with the asterisk that it uh, we get the accreditation uh, notice, official notice in June, um, we are going to start our program earlier and by starting earlier what I anticipate is a June start. Um, most grad programs, well the two in the state start in August but then they run through a second summer um, whereas ours would start let's say in June of 2022 students would graduate in May of 24 rather than July of 24. So we did that kind of purposefully so that um, our students, you know, were getting finished and, and able to apply for fellowship a little bit sooner. Another, I will say though, that summer classes that I recommend students consider and thinking that um, folks aren't pursuing a minor, they're not doing the degree, they're doing more post back. Um, but I would encourage um, folks to think about those ASHA prereqs. So those are classes like statistics, um, it, general biology, um, physics or chemistry, and I know I'm forgetting one, um, like a developmental psychology or, or um, child psychology course. Remember, those are ASHA requirements for clinical certification. Um, so in summer can be a very good time to do if you didn't have a statistics class, doing the statistics or doing a physics or chemistry um, to fulfill that physical science requirement from ASHA. So certainly stuff um, over the summer uh, to, to augment kind of the, the larger uh, academic goals. 
Anything else, Shannon? I think that is it. No one else has asked anything. Well, as we come up, oh, did I interrupt you? Oh, no, my desk just creaked. <laughs> <laughs> A creaking desk. Um, as we come up on, on the hour, I just want to, you know, thank you all for participating. I hope you found this um, a benefit. You can certainly tell I'm, I'm, my allergies are upon me, so I'm glad my, my voice maintained at least an audible level for, for the hour we were together. Um, again, there's great resources in the chat uh, by way of links, and those include the course conversion chart, they include the schedule for an individual advising appointment. Um, we uh, are excited about these changes, but change in and of itself can be, you know, sometimes um, hard to navigate in the beginning. So hear that we are here uh, and look forward to um, working with you in, in really bringing these things to fruition. And thanks to Shannon for spending the hour with me in your new digs. <laughs> yes, no worries. <laughs> Happy to do it. All right, y'all. Well, I'll enjoy, if you can, some some time outside in the lovely uh, spring air. And I will uh, hope to connect with you all soon.